Hello all, so uh, Clip Studio Paint just announced that they are transitioning towards a subscription based model for their uh, for future purchases and has a lot of backlash all over the world. It's not entirely just like Adobe's or your run of the mill subscription model. It's a little bit um, slightly different than that. And this person over in Twitter, Cyan, um, summarized it quite nicely. So they're making a version 2 and it will be a permanent license separate from V1 as well as the eventual version 3 when it eventually comes out and version 2.x or like the version in between version 2 and version 3 will require you to get a subscription until V3 is released and you won't be able to get V3's um, features and unless you get another subscription and all that stuff maintaining the program and making sure it still works with your operating system and uh, as far as i know um, drivers tablet drivers is still free and that's going to continue it's like a train where um right now there's a version one train and it's about to end its um, course so if you hop on the train now you get all the features inside the v1 train but you won't be able to get as much because it's about to end so you can just save up and maybe go hop on to version 2 so you get the features from um, version 2 train but you won't be able to get the upgrades from version 3 uh, when version 2 ends so you either hop on it now or hop on it later uh, depends on which train you actually hop onto. Generally, I think this is like a good summary of it, but I'm not entirely opposed to the idea. Um, it's not entirely groundbreaking to say that a company would use this type of model because other programs use this as well, mainly in 3D programs such as 3D code. And there's lots of fog and lots of um, uncertainties into the future but i'd also like to point out this post where someone read the faq basically it means that if you bought the v1 and you paid for the subscription to get the v2 features then at any point in the future you stop paying you will stop getting the features from v2 and you'll be stuck with the v1 again so this is like kind of like a red flag over there so you can't you can never upgrade your license you can only get a subscription that way you get to keep the features from the latest version so there's that now that that's done you're probably thinking of switching to another program such as krita and i'm here to kind of show you what type of features you would miss miss out on if you ever switch to Krita or maybe um, the feature counterparts in Krita that you are not as familiar with actually exist here but you just don't know the name or like you don't know how it works all right so right now um, I think the biggest thing would be the vector thing so we don't have vector layers I, I mean um, we also have vector layers, but that's mainly for text um, and shapes, ellipses and all that. So um, it's not like in Clip Studio Paint where you kind of um, draw using a vector line brush. Um, the next best thing is using brush smoothing. So Krita has a great um, brush stabilization over here so you can choose four of these options there's basic there's weighted and there's stabilizer so you can edit these um, edit these values to get the kind of control that you want so that you uh, you get like smoother lines when you're inking and all that there's also um, something called assistance over here so this is the assistance um, you can go over here and look for um, spline and what this will do is like create a line for you 
it's like a pen tool and you can make this snap to assistance and what that will do is kind of um, magnetize your line to that area and you can control the brush um, pressure so I'm making it really thin then make it really thick make it thin thick so you can control the pressure but your line is like magnetized to that like spline that you made so there's that and of course there's also uh, perspective which is interesting Open like this then you can extend it if um, that's something you're looking for and we also have two point perspective which is the more common one I think so it's like this so you can snap your lines to these like vanishing points and easily create your um, easily create your perspective drawings so we also have that over here so that with the, the fact that you can also stabilize your brush I think is okay for like 80% of the people out there but if vector tools are just something you can't live without uh, maybe you can consider looking for another program so another thing that you would likely miss out on um, over here in Krita is you can't transfer your brushes one to one Krita can't really read CSP's brushes as well as Photoshop so it's hard to transition um, those kinds of files into Krita the next best thing is to play around with the brushes over here Krita has a lot of brushes especially the default ones so you have a lot for the inking and just change the settings on um, how you would like it to react and if that's not enough for you there's also lots of brushes that are very similar to the ones that you would have over in Clip Studio Paint or in Photoshop you can find all sorts of brushes over here on the critaartists.org um, forums so lots of brushes here with lots of variety and I'm sure you'll find something that would suit your needs as well as over here on the resources page I'll put the links for both of this in the description so you can just check them out if you're running low on brushes Rita's brush engine is fairly powerful so if you're looking for um, a certain brush that you're missing from clip studio paint maybe something like this where it's a bit more painterly so something like this i'm sure that lots of people are looking for this type of brush because this is a really common style for csp users i think and also some really interesting brushes that um don't react normally so um something is like the clone tool so this is like the mixer brush from photoshop and there's the shape tool something like this and you can change the displacement make it a bit more um a bit more random so yeah very interesting brushes there's also um hose brushes so it's like picking from a random collection of um preset pngs and putting that around so these are called like image host brushes so there's also that um you can create you can use this to create like wonderful concept art and textures doing these branchy looking things so yeah even though i'm not drawing these branchy looking things um it's creating those lines for me so um Krita's brush engine is really really powerful so i don't i wouldn't worry about missing features about the brush engine whatever you can do in Clip studio paints brush engine you can probably do it over here as well so next up would be filling up um these line art drawings of yours filling filling them with color so of course there's the manual way of just filling it up with the paint bucket tool and we actually had a recent like big new update regarding this so you can select which reference like layer it's going to use what type of um coloring method it's going to use and um you can also see like sometimes there's this problem of not filling it entirely that's easily solved by making this grow part bigger there's that of course i'm on the layer above let's put this below so you can easily fill in things using this but um it's gonna have a harder time for like areas like these where the sketch isn't fully refined and there's lots of gaps so yeah for for something like this 
um you can either go for colorize which is which i'm not really going to explain too much about but there is this thing where you can put a colorize mask let's add a skin tone for this one and some black hair for the eyebrow here um let's get him like blue eyes darker over here i think blue eyes black pupils then general skin tone let's just use this one general skin tone then let's add um, a new color say purple and let's make this transparent so over here i'll make it transparent that way uh, krita knows what color should be transparent then i'm gonna add this or you can actually do it just like this then let's try to update it and now you can see it actually did fairly well so it kind of saw my marks cleaned it up a bit you know so over here um it didn't really paint it all the way in but you can see it has some capabilities if your line art isn't that good or refined other than that you can also go for this route so i'm gonna copy this layer and go to filters and look for colorize um, autofill is a good one but i'm not sure it works as well because um sometimes it bugs out just like this and if this doesn't work maybe this one would so this you can see that um it completes this line for me it completes um this line for me and you can change how much of it it can detect then you click apply then you just change whatever color you want this to be say i want this color to be i don't know green this one to be a skin tone skin tone this one brown this one blue and then this one light blue this one black so there's definitely some sort of optimization for that process so yeah so if you're ever stuck um and you have a question that you want answered you can always go to the Krita reddit and ask over here make your own text post so lots of people are asking over here how to use Krita's features and where to look for them and all that you can also go over here on the Krita forums um it's a, like it's a bit less people but um still quite useful you can also look for the roadmap and like what direction Krita is going into for the next like update and whatever so this is where mainly the developers and community members and all that usually hang out in and there's also a discord server this isn't like official but it's kind of where um a bunch of people goes so if you want a question to be answered um quite quickly and it can just be solved by someone showing you a screenshot or someone just telling you in like two sentences um how to solve your problem say oh i can't find the marquee tool where can i find the marquee tool someone can just hop on this girl and like tell you oh you can find it over here and send you a screenshot so yeah that would be that would be quite useful if it's like a bit more urgent a bit more timely so these are like the main community places that you can ask for help and of course if you have any more questions you can also leave them down in the comments i'll be trying to make some videos for clip studio paint in particular clip studio paint users and people transitioning from csp to krita so stay tuned for that and make sure to subscribe for future videos such as this one see ya and thanks for watching